Okay, hello everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, you all know me. I'm Deborah from Colred. Um, I'm the head of the customer domain. Yeah, and I'm Caroline. I'm from Accenture, where I'm the marketing and data transformation lead. Okay, so we already shared with you before, eh, Colorad is really in the midst of its transformation towards more personalization at scale. Uh, so we're very happy to be here together to uh, share some insights on that with you. Yes, indeed. And it's really a true partnership where the people of Colorad can actually bring that deep business knowledge that we need to unlock such a program. But also the people from Accenture Song can then bring the marketing, but also technology innovation that is needed to, to bring successful and to also ensure that we unlock the full potential, basically, that technology has to offer. Yeah. So as uh, you know, people are really in the, at the heart of the organization of Colorad and at everything we do. Um, so to make sure that we get this change going, we initiated a program. We call it the Customer 1.0 program. And this is actually what we'll be sharing with you, a bit more insights about that program and how we go about it. But why are we doing it? This is actually the most important thing. Uh, we want to aim for personalization at scale. Uh, we are in a journey in Colorado Group to actually enable uh, customer relationship centricity. We do this um, because we want to make sure that we create value throughout that chain. We want to give relevant customer interactions and have them based on the insights that we generate and we really want to answer our customers' needs and expectations. And we want to create common craftsmanship across Colorado Group to make sure that we maximize the value on a group level. We also want to do this in a way uh, that we um, continue customers, uh, that they trust us with their personal data. We know that they do, we just want to maintain that trust at all times and this is super important for us. And we also want to do it, of course, in a very cost-efficient way. Uh, we want to be flexible, eh, to be able to need to make changes uh, when we need to do so. And we always want to be, of course, up to date and um, having in place what we need. So how do we go about this? As I mentioned, we have a customer 1.0 program. Uh, as I shared earlier in the talk as well, we have uh, started with a strategic exercise. We made a strategic, strategic plan and a strategic framework, we call them. So this is basically mapping out, okay, where do we want to go? What's our goal? Then, once our goals were clear, the fit gap analysis was also part of that uh, strategic plan, we then went into an initiation phase, we called it. We initiated the project, we initiated the program. Um, we defined a high-level approach, uh, and we also then entered the RFP uh, process with uh, the selection of a vendor, um, which is Adobe and an implementation partner, which, which was Accenture. After that, we entered our definition phase where we started really defining a more detailed approach for our program, um, in which we also performed some pilot uh, test cases. So we did some small scale tests uh, in which we really wanted to learn, okay, if we're going to implement this technology at Colrad, which effect is it going to have? <clears throat> What can we learn from it? Uh, so we're now uh, doing that. And we're also setting up, of course, the final environment in, win in which we will run and scale up. Today, we're actually at the end of that definition phase um, where we are now um, yeah, working towards. And the end of that is aimed for uh, November, so coming soon. After which, we will enter our realization phase in which we will do the full implementation. And we will really upscale the solution. Uh, and we will also go through an organizational transformation. So for now, the change is still a bit small scaled. Uh, but then we will ramp it up and also the full organization will go through uh, this change. Yes, thank you, Deborah, for shedding a little bit of light on the approach and how far we've actually already come. And of course, we've learned already a lot in the past few months. Um, we've been working together for quite some time. So right now, we want to walk you through the five key learnings of what we know so far. And the first key learning that we have is really about that benefit of doing pilots. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we did pilots, which are, what do we call a pilot? Maybe that's good to explain. It's actually a really small scaled test uh, with just some basic integrations, some basic channels in which you can start and explore just a small use case uh, in a small contained uh, area. So why do we do that? We did them to learn. They don't generate the maximum benefit that they can generate, but you really learn on all aspects of your organization, which is hugely important. So you don't want to uh, aim for the stars or immediately unlock so much or put so much into that pilot that it becomes unrealistic. So really make them small and learn step by step. So we did six pilots. Um, so four are done, uh, two are still ongoing. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, learnings on various uh, dimensions, organization, people, process. So by doing those pilots, you really learn a lot of where your pain points are, where your dependencies are and how you need to manage that. And Caroline, um, of course, yeah, we made pilots, but then we also need to do some, uh, yeah, 
industrial light use cases. Can you sh maybe share some more on okay, how do we do that selection? Yeah, indeed. Because selecting the right use cases is not only important for a pilot, but it's also important for beyond. So I'm going to explain a little bit how we came from a very long list of use cases across multiple brands with each their own goals and each their own benefit towards the business. How did we get from that big list to a selection of pilots first and how do we go uh, beyond that? And here it's really important to prioritize on different angles. Prioritization isn't just about is it feasible, yes or no, is the complexity right at this case. But first of all, we looked at what will we learn from this use case. Does it fit within the strategy to fit within the pilot phase or not? Having that knowledge of the learnings that we will go along, of course, we need to still fit it within the possibility of integrations. Complexity is a key factor here, too. Those integrations and feasibility of them, we need to incre incrementally grow as well, and the use cases with that, too. As a third criteria for selecting prioritization, we had to look at flexibility. Because the use cases that we selected for pilots, but also the first use cases beyond, have to be flexible in a go-live date. Because we can't just have um, a set date for those pilots, because we still had a little bit of uh, setup to do. So we needed to be flexible also from the business angle, mm -hmm. in go-live date, in content, in small details of uh, those specific use cases. Another angle that was equally important was also the maturity of the teams, because we're talking here about an organization of multiple brands, multiple different angles that you want to approach your customer with. And we wanted to have a variety of different use cases across those brands specifically, because they each have their own maturity. That maturity is important to learn from as much as we can, to also have a plan on how we're going to approach to growth and maturity uh, going further. And last but not least, we also need to take into account the use cases being complementary to each other. Because when you are talking about use cases, you need to ensure that you start with something and you build on top of that and not use them as isolated cases, but really ensure that they somehow are complementary to each other, or at least that we can take learnings from the first pilot to the next, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a bit how we selected the right use cases. But having those use cases, we still need to go from an MVP to growing towards a full potential. And that's actually our third uh, learning that we he have here. And that's how do we aim for that success. Going about this program, we had a clear view that we needed to have an agile methodology. We needed to have an agile methodology with each time box their own specific goals and their own contribution to our end goal. Of course, always keeping that, uh, that end goal in, uh, in mind. Having an agile methodology also allowed us to have different teams in parallel. We needed to have different teams so that one team, for example, could focus on getting the pilot live, because that's one of the key actions that we needed to do, but also in parallel look at the long-term integrations, how we're going to learn from an integration we set up for the pilot to the 2B solution where we actually need potentially to make changes and work on that in parallel. Also having uh, the look at the maturity and the change of the team that is needed also needed to be done in parallel and also in that agile uh, setup. That flexibility that we talked about in having not only the scope but also the use cases and the business in place also um, was a key factor to actually becoming where we are today and have a successful pilot that, uh, that actually went live. Allowing the maturity of the business to grow within your organization grow along with you from day one and not just involve them at the successes in time, but actually yeah, generate success together with them is one of those uh, key learnings that we have today. And that actually flows within our next um, yeah, key learning that we have because that's about content and about content agility that we have in our team, if you can uh, elaborate a bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we heard it already before, eh, already in the plenary session as well. Um, having, you know, a large amount of content is really necessary to be able to deliver upon this. So really having that agility also when it comes to content is very important. Um, so it means a shift in mindset. Uh, very often when you make content, it's very campaign based um, and you go from one campaign to the other and you just make content for each individual piece and there's no connection. What we've learned is that we will probably need to switch our way of thinking into more uh, thinking of our content as a certain product that we deliver, which is more of a continuous flow of content and then being able to feed our pipeline that way. This learning is very important because some of you might have in-house agencies, some of you might work with, il with uh, external agencies, but the same reality goes for both. Uh, so you do need to, regardless of whether you have an in-house agency or not, you really need to make that switch and organize yourself upon it. And you will have a different setup with an internal versus an external agency. 
But of course, generative AI can help. Eh? Uh, not many of you are probably already working with it uh, very concretely. But we also see eh, that in the future, this might really be a key unlocker of uh, having that content velocity there. And uh, very last, very important, it also requires really a different skill set and a different mindset. So there, very important, is how you go about content. It's very different than how you have gone about content before. And just making also that mind sh the mindset shift there is very important within an organization, because if that doesn't follow, then um, you know the thing is not going to get rolling. So there, we really know that that is important. Our final learning that we would like to share with you today is that it is much more than a tech implementation. So don't just look at it, okay, I'm taking a tool and I'm doing a tech implementation. It is much more broad than that. And there is actually two things that we would like to share that's important to keep in mind. Um, the first one is that it's not just a marketing project. Uh, very often it's like, okay, we're going to do our marketing campaigns in a different way. And it's a marketing thing. Uh, when you start talking to other parts of your organization, it's very clear to go, oh, okay, the marketing project and then you would need to go like no no this is not a marketing project this is really a company-wide project that is so much impacting all aspects of our company uh, and it really touches all aspects of your company so you really need to manage those dependencies well in order to be successful in this transformation and then a second thing that's really important um, and, and stating that it's more than just a tech implementation, it's really people. I already mentioned it also uh, in the plenary session earlier. Don't underestimate the people change that this is really requiring um, because um, it's, it's linked to maturity and the maturity that your organization has in terms of people, their skills uh, and how they apply them. So this is really important, you know, assess your maturity. Where are you today? What are you able to do? What are you not able to do? And then really look, okay, where are the gaps and actively work on those gaps to get them closed. And also invest in good change management. It's a huge change. So don't underestimate the fact that this is quite impactful. It generates a lot of change. So have actually change management in place. It's not a nice to have. It's really a must have fundamental, uh, which we've also seen that is very important. And communicate frequently. Uh, you know, it's already such a kind of a mystery and a black box what this kind of transformation is for a lot of people. But if you are very open about it and communicate it also when things go wrong or when things are not super easy, uh, just having this open line of communication and really sharing what you're doing and what is going well and what is not going well, I think is really vital. Uh, and we've learned that that's been a great help to us uh, to make sure that everybody stays on board uh, along this transformation. Yes, indeed. So these are our five key learnings, right? So about talking about a pilot, ensuring that you have the right choices in terms of which use cases you're going to deliver, but also thinking about what's, what's beyond, ensuring that your people are actually with you and that your content process is also yeah, adapted towards yeah, what's coming next because you're bringing this new te technology. So you need to ensure that what's next is actually foreseen within your organization on all different levels that it's touched. And I think that's, that's a great summary of what we're doing here today, that not everything is about technology, not everything is about people, but it's really about bringing both together and really focusing on, on the right angles from, from uh, both sides, but also learn on all of these aspects. Every step that you're taking is an opportunity to learn. And we need to also document that, formalize that learning and ensure that whatever learning that you have, you bring to the next stage. Things will go wrong. There will be choices that were made that actually end up being the wrong choice on an integration, on a specific use case, on anything that we can, that we can imagine, anything that we touched. But if you bring the learnings from that to your next step, then you will become more successful. And every single aspect, every single team that works with you needs to have that mindset to be, uh, to be successful. In the round off, I think I want to thank you all for being here. And if you have any more questions, please do also come meet us at the Accenture booth. Or uh, if you can uh, grab one of us, please yeah. do ask any questions that you still have, because we're very happy to, uh, to answer them. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed uh, what we had to tell you today. And uh, we thank you for your attention.